new investigation released by the Israeli paper Haaretz titled Israeli army uses Palestinian civilians to inspect potentially booby-trapped tunnels in Gaza. Okay, I mean, you, you all know what I'm going to say. We told you so. I mean, Palestinians have been saying this for uh, months, if not longer. Uh, certainly, we saw videos and photographs of them using uh, Palestinians as human shields. And we know that, you know, if you go back and, and look at some of the uh, headlines that used to be published in the, in the British press uh, a few decades ago, you would see Israel using Palestinian boy as young as 13 as a human shield. Blind, you know, the, the boy is blindfolded and, and, and strapped to the, to the top of a jeep so that, if, uh, so that no one can shoot at the Israelis. So, you know, this is, this is highly, extraordinarily hypocritical, to say the least. Let's, let's dive in. So, at first, it's hard to recognize them. They're usually wearing Israeli army uniforms. Many of them are in their 20s, and they're always with Israeli soldiers of various ranks. But if you look more closely, you see that most of them are wearing sneakers, not army boots, and their hands are cuffed behind their backs and their faces full of fear. The soldiers call each of them a shawish, an obscure Arabic word of Turkish origin, meaning sergeant. Random Palestinians have been used by Israeli army units in the Gaza Strip for one purpose, to serve as human shields for soldiers during operations. Soldiers were told, quote, our lives are more important than their lives. The thinking is that it's better for the Israeli soldiers to remain alive and for the shawishim. <laughs> uh, so that's basically the, the plural of shawish in Hebrew, uh, to be the ones blown up by an explosive device. This description is one of many obtained by Haaretz, some from combat soldiers, others from commanders. The picture that emerges is that in recent months, Israeli soldiers have used human shields in this way all over Gaza, even the chief of staff's office knows. Okay? Sanctioned from the highest level. Soldiers choose Gazans for the missions and bring them to the brigades and battalions operating in the Strip. Quote, there is pride in it, said a source who took part in some of the quote-unquote locating work. The senior ranks know about it, the source said. The army has played innocent, despite footage shown on Al Jazeera about two months ago. Israeli soldiers can be seen dressing Palestinian detainees in uniforms and flak jackets, putting cameras on them and sending them into badly damaged houses and tunnel entrances with their hands bound by plastic ties. I mean, that is... That is sadistic. That is sadistic and evil, to say the least. So not, not only are Israelis cowards by dropping bombs uh, on a civilian population with no uh, bunkers or aircraft, anti-aircraft or ACAC, but on top of that, the ground units cannot even enter a building, uh, so they send a Palestinian instead because they are so uh, uh, cowardly. Amazing, really. The Americans are furious. Though Vidant Patel, a State Department spokesman, so that's the guy who looks like an office character, has said that the IDF is investigating the incidents and uh, that evidence in the videos does not reflect the IDF's values and violates rules and regulations. There you go, that's another war crime, using human shields, right? When I saw the report from Al Jazeera, I said, ah yes, it's true. So that's according to a combat soldier uh, in, an, in an IDF conscript brigade who took part in the use of Gazans as human shields. And then I saw the IDF's response, the soldier says, which totally doesn't reflect reality. It is done with the knowledge of the brigade commander, at the very least. Here, let's play this clip, shall we? See, you, you can always count on the Israelis to record their own crimes. Going back to the article, the soldier said that in the IDF, they know it's not a one-time incident of a young and stupid company commander who decides on his own to take somebody. There is also evidence that in some cases, minors or the elderly are used. There were times when really old people were made to go into houses, one combat soldier said. If the Palestinian knows Hebrew, that's an advantage for the IDF. 
When Gazans are used in buildings and tunnels, they need to report to the forces outside. As one soldier put it, Palestinians are told, do one mission of a tunnel shaft and then you're free. Still, even though some Palestinians are required to remain with a unit only, <laughs> quote unquote, for 24 hours, others wind up staying for two days or even a week. When you're inside this thing, you don't know how to say what is okay, the soldier said. What is certain is that it is a horrible feeling. For its part, the IDF spokesperson's unit said uh, that IDF instructions and orders prohibit the use of Gazan civilians caught in the field for military missions that pose a deliberate risk to their lives. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sure it sounds very lovely and has uh, nothing to do with reality. So I'm not going to bother reading it. <laughs> you saw it on the screen. So the incidents described to Haritz occurred in different parts of Gaza, but they are all very similar. As the story of a combat a soldier who spent months there reveals. One day, he and his comrades arrived at the brigade commander's building. The soldier saw someone he didn't recognize walking back and forth, accompanied by soldiers who were guarding him. He was uh, wearing a uniform without a flak jacket and with sports shoes. They asked us to accompany him if he needed to go to the bathroom and to make sure that he had food. How lovely. The soldier said he didn't understand what was going on at the stage. He and his fellow soldiers wondered if the Palestinian was a prisoner now collaborating with the IDF. Yes, I suppose you could put it that way, <laughs> uh, you know, involuntarily collaborating. Um, but the next day, the troops needed to inspect a tunnel and viewing a screen, soldiers realized that the Palestinian had been sent inside the tunnel wearing an IDF uniform. His hands were tied behind his back and a camera attached to his body. We heard very deep breaths. It sounded like he was a little afraid, said a soldier who viewed the footage. They simply sent him in and he mapped it out for the commanders with the brigade commander watching on the outside. One soldier said that when soldiers expressed concerns, they were told that the idea in general was that if the house was booby-trapped, or if there was an ambush or terrorists in the area, they would kill the Palestinian who was sent in and not the soldiers. That was also the first time the commanders said the word shawish. Another soldier in the unit said that this happened time after time. He said that in every operation, a human shield would be sent out 10 minutes before everyone else, then came the wait for the brigade commander. People began to ask questions very quickly. A mess began about this, this procedure, uh, said one soldier. Some argued that they weren't willing to carry out operations if it included a Gazan who was forced to sacrifice himself. Of course, there were those who supported it, but at least um, with us, there were ju just a few of them, mostly the commanders who were afraid to deal with the more senior commanders. Honestly, I'm, I'm not quite sure what they mean with this, because this sentence, knowing the Israelis, could actually mean, I, I'm not joking, th this could actually mean that they don't want to use a Palestinian as a human shield, not because they care about the Palestinian, but just because they don't want to be around one. Yeah, that's what this could mean. It could, it could go either way. I, re I really don't know. I really don't know. So you can see here that they, uh, uh, one of them ended up being shot, and uh, uh, they also talk about how Palestinians were used as human shields in 2002's Operation Defensive Shield in the West Bank during the Second Antifada. This was often known as the neighbor procedure. Soldiers fearing booby traps sent Palestinians into buildings. This was also done in the search for wanted men. Rights groups then petitioned the Supreme Court, serving as the High Court of Justice, which ruled in 2005 that the procedure was illegal and violated international law. The IDF chief of staff at the time, uh, Halutz, ordered the military to thoroughly enforce the court's ruling. Yes, I can see that that's worked out very well. Um, but in recent months, the IDF has preferred not to comment officially on the matter, even though it was reportedly discussed by the most senior officers. Halavi, so again, that's the IDF chief of staff, the, basically the head of the army, um, is among the senior officers aware of the use of Gazans as human shields. So the head of the Southern Command also knows. Um, and uh, in, so... One source who is at the Southern Command said that in every meeting where this issue was raised, there were commanders who warned about the ethical and legal implications if the matter was exposed publicly. <laughs> if the matter was exposed publicly. Like, you know, there, there are no legal and ethical implications until it's exposed publicly. Otherwise, just carry on. <laughs> there were officers who asked that the meeting be halted so that they would be allowed to leave. <laughs> you know, they just don't want to be implicated. Not like, I will leave if, un unless you... You know, unless you stop, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I, I refuse to serve in the army. I will not tolerate you using civilians as human shield. No, 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 it's not that protest. It's just, I don't want to be involved. <laughs> I don't want to be here when we talk about it being illegal. You know, I didn't know it was illegal. So, um, one soldier in a conscript army brigade uh, talks about uh, two Palestinians brought over. One was 20, the other was 16, and uh, they were told to use them, their Gazans, use them as human shields. Okay. Uh, so they wanted to know who gave the order, 
and then according to the soldier, uh, uh, they tried to say something about October 7, not something concrete. One person said, don't beat them too much because we need them to open the locations where troops enter, such as buildings and tunnels. Oh, how merciful. So this is just one of the soldiers that the, uh, uh, sorry, one of the orders that the soldiers received. Uh, for example, they were also required to keep the Gazans handcuffed and to ensure that the Gazans didn't escape or enter the rooms and floors where the commanders uh, were located. The Gazans were given combat rations and water. Many soldiers felt uncomfortable about this, demanded answers, and even shouted, said a person who was near one of the Gazans. Most of them realized there was a problematic incident here, and it was hard for them to process. Oh, poor them. Poor, poor soldiers, right? You know. Forget the, the, the poor bastard being used as a human shield. Oh no, it's, it's, it's traumatic for the soldiers, you know. One soldier said that when he and his colleagues asked why, they were told about the dogs of the Oket's canine unit. Dogs were getting killed or wounded when they were sent in to locate explosives or attack the enemy. Or after their experience, the dogs had to be discharged because their operational senses had deteriorated. I mean, they're basically saying, use the Palestinian civilians because we don't want to hurt the dogs, the you know army dogs, whose job it is to be in the army, as opposed to the civilian, right? <laughs> so basically, they, they are implying, if not saying, I mean, tacitly, that they view a Palestinian as less than an animal. Is this surprising when the defense minister calls uh, Palestinians human animals? What, what do you think is going to happen then? What do you think the commanders and the, uh, the soldiers are going to uh, internalize and think like? Again, I, I think this paragraph is very clear. It's very clear. Okay, so one soldier asked, uh, said that when he and his colleagues asked why, they were told about the dogs being... Uh, killed uh, or, or you know being discharged so basically saying that you know they, they, we don't want to have to use the dogs use the palestinian instead that is i mean just disgusting really just dis disgusting the term international law came up a number of times but the battalion commander reportedly had one response to all the soldiers questions a soldier doesn't need to take an interest in the laws of war you need to think about the idf's values and act according to the idf's values not the laws of war i mean He's basically insulting himself. <laughs> He's basically saying that in our army, using civilians as human shields is acceptable and encouraged and necessary. Who cares about international law? What are you, a normal human being? But they are the ones that are actually doing this stuff. Okay, that, here, these are photographs from the article I just read to you. Look, dressing them up, blindfolding them, zip ties, you know, handcuffing them. I mean, it's disgusting. It's beyond, beyond disgusting. I'm, 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 I'm sure, I'm sure that the Nazis also used human shields, but I can't remember any photographs, uh, and, and I, man, I've seen a ton from World War II. It's funny that when I think of human shields, I can, I can recall so many Israeli photo, you know, photographs of Israelis using Palestinians as human shields, literally physically in the flesh, in front of them, to physically shield them. Okay? Listen to the response of the Americans. But you often condemn Hamas for using um, Palestinians as a human shield, mm -hmm. and there is this big investigation now by an Israeli newspaper saying that the Israeli army has systematically using Palestinians as a human shield because they believe their lives is superior to the Palestinians. So do you condemn the Israelis for using Palestinians for the same purpose that you condemn Hamas? So your um, colleague Said raised this issue uh, before you walked in, and I will just echo that uh, these reports are incredibly disturbing, and uh, we urge Israel to immediately and transparently um, look into these allegations and hold uh, any perpetrators uh, accountable. But I, I also just want to stress, as I as I did with uh, Said, that these are uh, just reports at these at this point, and so uh, what we would call on is for Israel to look into this. Um, and uh, ascertain what's actually so going what's on. But seriously, this guy is such a, he's, he's such a nincompoop. I mean, he, he comes here and he says, these are just reports. Dude, your job is literally to speak to journalists who do reports. And they're photographs. I just, I just put, up, put up the photographs. There's like video evidence of this. They're not just reports. They are backed up r reports with sources and, and, and evidence. I mean, what, what kind of stupid response is that? When he says they're using civilian infrastructure as you know, a base of operations. It's true that if you do that, there is, the building, if, let's say it's a school or a hospital, is, it's no, it, it no longer qualifies as a civilian object. It's no longer protected under international law. But, 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 if there are civilians inside the building, they don't lose their status. They're still civilians, okay? 
the, the buildings and people are two separate uh, groups. And you, you, the proportionality still applies. So, you know, if you, if you have one soldier or 10 soldiers inside of a hospital and you've got 200 patients, that doesn't mean you can just, you know, destroy the hospital. Do you understand what proportionality means? <laughs> Do you understand what harm to civilians? Not civilian objects that have been turned into, you know, military ones. I'm talking about civilian life, okay? Th that still applies. So, you know, they, they just completely leave that, that whole part out, right? Of course, because th then... How, how, how are they going to try and justify their, their brutality? You called on the Israeli government to transparently look into these. You, the State Department has called a number of times for the Israeli government to look into reports of abuses. Have they ever gotten back to you with any sort of answers the, on these reported abuses that are taking there place? Is a, there, is a, there is a close uh, information sharing relationship between us and Israel. I'm obviously not going to speak to every single um, uh, issue or every single um, uh, incident that's been raised, but there is a close information sharing relationship with, with Israel. and we. What kind of an answer is that? I didn't ask you if you like to, you know, exchange notes in class. <laughs> Your information sharing relationship. <laughs> you know, he, he always says this, I'm not going to speak to blah, blah, blah. Well, then what, why are you here? Just, you know, pack up the conference. Stop, you know, you see, th this is the difference between dictatorships, ones that are, you know, very tacit and overt, and the United States is that they give you the illusion that you have democracy. There's, you know, look, they have a podium. There's some nice little flags in the background. There's a camera filming. It's recorded. There will be a transcript afterwards. You can come and ask a question, maybe. And guess what? It's not going to get answered. Screw you. The crimes will continue. It's just an illusion, right? This is the only difference. Dictatorships just don't bother with decorum. That's the only difference, okay? You, please understand this. <laughs> God, I mean, re really just... Um... Really horrific. And, and one of those journalists in the previous question, she said that, uh, that they were using Palestinians as human shields because they viewed their lives as superior to those of the Palestinians. That's not true. Israelis view their own lives and the lives of their dogs as superior to Palestinians. That is the correct uh, 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 phrasing, and that is what was mentioned in the article. And that has to be pointed out because it shows you the level of racism and, and inhumanity uh, that, that, that grips Israeli society. And you cannot say that this is, you know, a few, but, you know, a few regiments or a few uh, squads or a few incidents. The head of the army, when they say the chief of staff of the IDF, that is the head, the chief of the army, knows about this. Head of the Southern Command knows about this. Brigade commanders order the troops to do this. So it is, it is being implemented as a matter of military policy. Do you understand? And, and that makes it all the more illegal. It makes it, uh, uh, you know, 10 times as worse. Uh, and honestly, honestly, um, you know, you, in, if you're given an illegal order, you are not obliged to carry out that order. You know, just because this, uh, uh, your commander tells you, go jump off a building, that doesn't mean you, you have to actually go jump off a building. Dep I mean, it depends on your commander. But there are legal grounds for you to disobey things like this. This is so clearly, explicitly illegal under any jurisdiction. They were saying in the article that even under Israeli law, uh, the Supreme Court decided and, and clarified this is illegal. You cannot use civilians as human shields, right? Um, so under any jurisdiction, it is forbidden. And it's ironic that, you know, the IDF guidelines also say it's forbidden, but then the commander at the end says, don't think about international law, think about the IDF's values. Right? Very, very important to point that out. Values. So the IDF can certainly say one thing and, uh, you know, uh, feel uh, quite passionate about uh, something entirely different. Vile. Really, really vile. I mean, they call this the most moral army in the world. It's, it's the most immoral army in the world. It's the most evil army in history. Really, man. Really. Really. If you're claiming you're better than everyone and you're more civilized than everyone and you're more democratic than everyone and you still behave like this and you lie on top of it, you, you, you know, the hypocrisy, I mean, Jesus, it's, it's a total 180, you know? We're doing a lot, we're doing a lot of math analogies today. Um, that, that makes you worse, right? Because you're, you're supposed to know better according to your own, uh, you know, dis, your, your, your own self-description about how good you are and how moral. You're supposed to know better, right? You're the only civilized ones. You're the chosen people. And yet you still behave like this and you lie and you cover it up and accuse others of doing what you're doing. You know, 
This is why we say every Israeli accusation is a confession. Every single one. Every single one. The gang raping, you know, uh, the, the killing pregnant women, uh, using human shields, every single one. All of them. It's, it's, it's uncanny, honestly. Again, YouTube demonetized my channel because I'm not allowed to say naughty things about Israel. Um, you know, telling the truth is forbidden. So uh, if you are able to donate a few dollars on PayPal or uh, on a monthly basis on Patreon, please consider doing it because it would really help me continue my journalism and support independent media. So I'd be very grateful. And the links are in the uh, description and also in the chat. Thank you guys very much again uh, for all your donations and all your kind comments. I appreciate it very much.